Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to import a more complicated 2D asset into Unity to use in the actual game engine. So the trick here is going to be that a lot of what you see here for this little mart is broken into multiple assets, multiple layers. So in order for this to work best, bringing in animations that are separate from each other and can be controlled independently, uh, we're going to need to have everything broken down into their own layers. So if I take a look at my supermarket group in Asaprite, you can see I have two layers for this top roof door. I have a layer for each fan. Really one is just a direct copy of another. Then there's also this front supermarket door down here with the sliding motion and the base of the market, everything else that you see in the picture that's not animated. So in my Unity project, I'll go ahead and make sure I have a folder created to hold these art assets inside of the assets root. So I'll create a new folder here. And for that supermarket, I was using a color scheme called Apollo. So I'll just call the folder Apollo. So now I'll right click inside of the folder, do show and explore. And I want to bring my assets into here. So what I'll do is I'll export each of these layers independently, and then I'll merge everything together back in Unity as one larger asset. So I'll rename the layer to something that makes a little bit more sense here. Let's call it roof door. So with this roof door layer, I want to go up to File, Export Sprite Sheet, and then you'll see everything in the document here, which is obviously way too much stuff. So what I want to do is go to the Sprite tab, change layers to selected layer, or you can select the one that you want to edit here. So I could just select roof door directly here, and then go to Borders and do Trim Sprite. So this is going to be more what you want for each of your animations, just a sprite sheet with nothing else in there except the animated object. But you'll notice there's a lot of duplicates in this animation, so we can go to Layout, Merge, Duplicates, and you can see there's actually only four frames here that matter. So we'll go here, Outport File, check this, click here to give it a new name, and I'll overwrite this rooftop exit door.png here. So I'll hit OK, and yes. So let's export it now. And over here, you can see that part of the asset. So let's do it again for the door frame. I'm going to rename this layer to be roof door frame so that it's clear. Let's go to file, export sprite sheet. And now we just need to change the layer here. So where it says layers rooftop door, I'm going to select the next one down, the frame. And you'll see that it's actually not fitting everything. So we need to go over to borders and do trim again. After selecting that, go back over to borders and trim it. So here it's fine to have these extra pixels. We just want it trimmed to the edges of our shape. So now let's go to outport and I'll save this as rooftop exit door frame. Hit OK, export. And we can see that these are both in here. So just keep repeating the process for all the necessary layers. So let's get the fan. I'll select fan from the list. It's already been trimmed to merge the duplicates. And we can see that the shape is being trimmed here as well. So give it the name here, rooffan.png. Next, the supermarket door. So I'll select that from the list. Obviously, it needs to be trimmed here. So let's go to borders and try trim sprite. And as we can see here, uh, there's a couple extra pixels that shouldn't be there, and I need to clean up the door a little bit. So let's go back. Uh, I'll just hide everything else so it's easy to see. Going to show the supermarket door. Let's fill in those pixels and just do that for each of the frames as necessary. Okay, And then just need to remove those extra pixels. So just going frame by frame to check that. This can happen when you're working with too many layers and uh, you just accidentally draw on the wrong one. But that looks clean now. So let's go to File, Export Sprite Sheet, select the supermarket door. We could see it's been cleaned up and that there's no random pixels on the side of the screen. OK, so let's go ahead and give it an output file, marketfrontdoor.png, and let's go ahead and export it. Lastly, the mart itself with nothing else. So this will be a one frame image. It would also be possible to break this into different tiles and then rebuild that in the game. But for right now, I'll just use this as a one-off asset. So I'll export the entire image, export sprite sheet, the supermarket, and then export that. Now, since all of these new assets kind of go together, I might create a folder and bundle them all together. So let's call it supermarket and either paste it in there or cut it in there. And now I'll just copy this over to the Unity assets, put it in there. And now we have our supermarket. Now, since this is Pixar, we'll just need to change the settings on these uh, to turn off the filter mode and turn off the compression. So I'll just select all five of these at once, holding shift down, turn off filter mode, compression set to none, hit apply. Now, for some of these, the ones that have animations, 
we'll need to change it from sprite mode single to sprite mode multiple. Let's go into the sprite editor and just slice it by the number of frames. So here we can see there's four frames. So I will go slice uh, cell count, four columns, slice. Okay, we have four images here, hit apply. And then that's split into its animation. Let's do the same thing for the rooftop door. Sprite mode, multiple, apply, slice, grid by cell count, four again, hit apply. And we'll also want to do that for the front door of the supermarket. So uh, make sure it's in sprite mode, multiple, apply, slice. And this looks like seven frames. So seven columns, hit apply, and verify it's correct. Okay, now to actually build the supermarket in the game. Let's go to scene view really quick and let's start putting in our object. So I'm going to start with the main frame here, just dragging it in. Okay, so we have one sprite image. Let's also add in the exit door frame as a child object. So whenever something's a child, if you move the parent, then it's going to move the children as well. So that's pretty convenient um, if you ever need to move everything at once in the game. So let's move the exit door frame to be offset up here. You can also see here that this project is set up to sort by the Y position of the sprites. So in a case like this, where the Mart's uh, center point is going to be down here, and this rooftop door frame is up here, you may need to put it on a different sorting layer. So I'm going to change the sorting layer to be over player. That's just a custom layer I created. You can hit add sorting layer if you need to. And we'll move this up here. You can also have it positioned differently than it was in Asaprite if you want to since now everything is its own separate asset. And let's add in the rooftop exit door on top of that. So I'll just position that in there, put it on the same layer over player, and move it into position. If you need to for positioning it, you can also have it snap up here. So we can, let's say, do the increment snapping 0.01. So now if we try to move it, but hold control down, it will do the increment snapping. And that can be handy for getting it pixel by pixel. Uh, right now, the project's set to, as you can see, 100 pixels per unit. It's going to be 0 0.01 for one pixel. So that's why I'm using that for the snapping um, so that it doesn't do any half pixels or anything like that. So holding control down is going to be handy for getting everything to line up. OK, so let's also position the supermarket front door. I'm going to drag that onto the supermarket. Uh, let's pull this down here, okay? And I think it needed to be right here. Can also try enabling grid snapping. So let's do 0 0.01. I'll default this to zero so that we're starting from a fresh position. And let's move this down here. So make sure all access is checked. And now with this set to 0 0.01, let's move the door, not the supermarket, but the front door down to here. And it should snap into place. So we want it right here at the bottom. Next, we can put a fan at the top of the supermarket. So I'll apply that as a child object for now. Let's move this up here. I'll put the sorting layers over the player and snap this into the place that we want it to be in. OK, so if we hit play, uh, everything's sort of in place, but nothing's animated. So we need to animate each of these individual objects. So I'll start with the roof fan. I'll rename it to be roof fan. Let's add a animator to it. This is going to need a animator controller. So let's create a game object folder for this kind of stuff. So if I click in this objects folder, I'll create a new folder. I'm going to call it supermarket to hold all of the supermarket objects for now. I can always move things around later if I need. Open it up, drag the roof fan into here. And then let's create the roof fan animator controller. So I'm going to right click in the supermarket folder, create animator controller. I'll call it AC roof fan. Now let's drag that into the animator and it's going to need an animation. So, so let's open the animation window, click on the rooftop game object, and then let's create the animation clip here. Create. So I will call this anim underscore roof fan. And then let's drag the sprites in from the assets art folder. So I'll go back where I have those sprites. I'll drag all four frames from here, selecting them all. You can expand it into the keyframe editor on the animation window. OK, so now if we hit play, we should see the fan animate. Clearly, it's way too fast. I'm going to turn the samples down to 10 and hit play. So now we can see that the fan is animating at the correct speed. 
that's good. And if we hit play, then we're gonna see that it's gonna default to that single animation. If we open up the animator, you can see this animation has already been added here for this roof fan. And it's just gonna keep looping that by default. Since this is a single animation object, we're basically done with the fan. So to make sure that you can easily duplicate this anytime you need it in your game, make sure that it's lit blue here, indicating that there's a prefab object that's been created. As you can see, I have it in object supermarket. So if I want another one of these, I can just drag them into the scene, uh, position them under the parent game object like I need, and then I can move it around where I want it to be, hit play. And now I have two fans on the roof, kind of like we had in uh, the Asprite editor. So I might go to the first rooftop fan and copy paste the Y position, just making sure they line up and everything so it looks nice. And that's how we handled that animation. So next let's work on the front door here. I'll rename it, get rid of that zero at the end. Let's create a prefab in the supermarket objects folder here. I'll create an animator for this object. So add a animator and then just like the fan creative on time controller, right click and then do create animator controller. I'll call it AC supermarket front door, drag the animator controller into the runtime animator controller for the object. Let's go to animation and we'll create two clips here. We'll have the idle where it's just a closed door and then we'll have the open animation where when some event triggers, the door will open. So I'm gonna create and let's do anim supermarket front door open. I guess that would be fine. Hit save and then I will uh, right click in here and create another animation. And then in the animation window over here, which by the way, if you don't have open, you can go to windows animation and open the animator and animation windows over here. I'm going to click on this drop down, create a new clip and I'll call it anim supermarket front door idle. Okay, and create that. So let's create those two animations. Uh, I'm gonna set both of their samples to 10 for 10 frames per second. We go into where we have the art, in this case, the supermarket folder over here. Going to go to these front door animations. So the idle just needs frame zero. I'll pop that in there. So if I hit play, you can see nothing happens. And then the other one is going to need all of these frames. So I'm gonna drag these in here, hit play. And you can see this is actually a little too much. So we need to separate this into two animations, one for opening and one for closing. So it's open here. So these frames I actually don't need in this animation. So I'll go to the start, hit play, and you can see it goes from closed to open. And we also don't want this animation to loop, so I'll turn so I'll turn that off in the objects folder in a minute. Let's create the anim closed animation. So anim supermarket front door close. And then let's get these last three frames, and that shouldn't be it because we need the frame zero as well. Set the samples to 10, line everything up and test it. Did we need three as well? Hold on, let me check and drag that in there. So frame three, yeah, okay, we do need five frames for this animation. So just line up the, the uh, sprite frames. You can expand it down here if you wanna see which frame is which. And there's our closing animation. Let's check to open one more time. So one, two, three. Okay, so that's there. Okay, now uh, objects folder supermarket, take those animations, which are only supposed to trigger once, click on them, go to the inspector, turn off loop time. Okay, so idle can be looping, I guess. It doesn't really matter, but turn it off for close and open. Okay, uh, now we'll need some sort of code to control this door. When is it going to open and when is it going to close? So let's set up some transitions here. We can go from idle to open and we can go from open to close. And we can also go from open to close and close to idle. So make those transitions uh, for each of them. For the one going to open, expand the settings, give it a transition duration of zero and turn off has exit time. We'll have to set a condition here for this to work in a minute uh, so that it can actually trigger going from idle to open. For now, let's go from open to close. In this case, we do want an exit time at 1.0. We want the open animation to fully occur before we go to the close animation, but the transition should be instant, transition duration of zero. And we'll also need a condition here for it to go from open to close, and then from close to idle uh, should be automatic. So 
what well, use the has exit time at one transition duration of zero so that once it's closed it'll just go back to idle okay um so in this case since this is an electronic door uh how we can make it open is by having a player or any other object you want to trigger the door standing at some area right around here so let's create a trigger zone so that the supermarket front door can open when our player walks on top of it. So I'm going to do add component and we're going to want a box collider 2D. So I'm going to also apply this to the prefab, click on the three dots, added component, apply to prefab front door. Let's actually just jump into the prefab and the hierarchy so that we can edit it directly. And let's set up this box collider. So if you hit edit, we want this to come below the front door. So I'm going to edit its top and bottom bounds to be right around here. And I'm also going to put it in is trigger mode. It's not used for collisions. It's just when the player walks onto it, we want to open the door. So now we need to make a script that just triggers when the player walks in here to change the animation to open the door and maybe move the player inside the supermarket or something like that. So now we just need a script that's going to use this box collider check if the trigger happens where a player walks in here, and then to open the door if that is the case. So I'm gonna do add component. I'll do automated door as the script name, because there could be many doors in the game that work like this, not just the one in the supermarket. So I will create and add the script, edit script. Okay, first thing we need to get is the box collider 2D, and I will call this door trigger collider, make it public so that we can set it in the inspector. And then for this model behavior, we need to implement the on trigger enter 2D function. If it has a trigger collider, it'll be able to enter here. So we'll get access to the collider, which is the object that um, basically entered the 2D area. And then we can set a Boolean um, in the script and pass it on to the animator so that we can open and close the door. So Boolean, and I could call this something like door triggered to open equals false by default. So when the box collider gets triggered, we can check if the collider is of a certain type. There's many ways to do that. Uh, one is that we can look at the components on the player. So we can see here we have a player input. That could be a generic way of looking at uh, the player to verify that it is of a player type, since this would only be on a player. Or we can use a custom script, like I have this dynamic player controller. I think I will use the player input just to keep things as generic as possible. So let's see if there's a player input component on the colliding object. So I'll do collider.getComponent player input. And this type is actually coming from Unity input input system. Uh, so you would have to be using this movement method, which you can get in Windows package manager if you search for the input system. This basically replaces the default old uh, Unity input for controlling players. So if the player input is valid, then we can set the door triggered to open to true. Okay, now we need one more, which is in reverse. When the player leaves the door area, we want the door to shut. So we'll do void on trigger exit 2D with a 2D collider as the parameter, of course. And we'll do the same thing here. I'm just going to copy paste. But if it's a player input that's leaving the trigger zone, then we want to set it to false. And I'll also pass this on to the animator on the game object. So we'll need that up here. Let's do private animator animator. And uh, when the script starts, we can find it on the game object animator equals get component animator. Then just down here, we do animator dot set pool door triggered to open. We can do that twice. Oh, and we, we need to give it the name of the Boolean. So I'll call it the same thing door triggered to open. And you know what? That's kind of a long name. I'll call it trigger open. And let's uh, rename that everywhere. So down here, string trigger open, and then pass the Boolean trigger open onto the animator. And of course, make sure that everything is set to the same variable name here. I'm going to actually remove this box collider reference because it shouldn't technically be necessary right now. Because whether we set it in the script or not, it's still going to be able to trigger on trigger enter here. If for some reason this like extra box colliders and they would conflict with each other. We can always break it into another child game object if we need to. But yeah, let's make sure that this is working on trigger enter on trigger exit. Everything should have the same variable name here matched with up here. And let's go ahead and hit play so we can come here and the door will open. And if we leave, 
the trigger open gets turned off and it returns to close. And so we have open and close. So the only thing is that we also need to change the uh, starting animation to idle. It shouldn't open automatically when the game starts. So that's pretty easy. Just right click on entry and do set state machine default state to idle. Now, if we hit play, it should be working correctly. So we can open the door, we can leave to close the door. And that basically seems to be working correct now. Okay, one more thing I want to set up is collisions for this object here. So we can see the rooftop has these walls up here, but this should actually be walkable space for this supermarket, the roof. So we should be able to walk out onto the roof of the supermarket and use this as playable space. But everything else basically down here, maybe with the exception of the front door, should have a collision shape. So let's go ahead and set that up. On the supermarket, I'm going to add in a, let's just say a box collider, and let's edit it. So I will make it right about here for the collision shape on top. And then I could add in a few more box colliders for these edges if I want. You can also try other types of colliders. For instance, a polygon collider 2D is an option. Uh, this would also work well with tile sets where you can define collisions on each individual tile if you want to do things that way. So another thing we can do with all of these box colliders so that they can all work as one unit is to add a uh, composite collider 2D. And then let's take each of these box colliders and check used by composite, used by composite, used by composite, and used by composite. So basically we just take these four colliders and combine them into one here. Let's go ahead and see if these colliders are actually blocking the player. I'll hit play. So for the supermarket, let's also go to the rigid body, put it in static mode so that it's not going to move at all. Let's go ahead and hit play. And let's see if these colliders actually work. So we can see the player is not able to go through the wall or the left side. Shouldn't be able to go through the top up here as well or the very top. So that seems to be working good, all of the box colliders working together there. But if we move the player onto the rooftop like so, and we hit play, you should be able to move around the rooftop just fine, but not go past the walls. So that's kind of what we're looking for, a playable rooftop that is separate from the area outside of the supermarket. And presumably to exit the rooftop, we'd have to go through this little thing here. So for the rooftop door, I think I also want to attach that automated script to it. So I will do automated door here. And let's set up this door to be just like the one on bottom. So, so inside of object supermarket, we need to have a animator override controller that will basically use the same setup as this store, uh, but with its own set of animations up here. So I'm going to right click in here, create animator override controller, AOC and, uh, and let's see, rooftop, exit, door. I'll put that in the animator. So add an animator component, drag this in here. And now for the, and now if you click on the animator override controller, we need to put in the original to here. And we need to override the animation clips. So let's create those animation clips. I'll right click, create. So if we click on the rooftop, exit, door. First off, let's drag this in here as a prefab. But then also let's click on it, go to animation, and let's create these override animation clips. But now let's duplicate these animation clips and replace the frames of animation. So I'm going to control paste this. So I'll call this rooftop close. Let's duplicate the idle and do rooftop idle. And then the open, let's duplicate that. And I'll call this rooftop open. So now for these animations, we just need to replace these sprite frames from the art assets. So if we click on the door, let's bring in these four frames for the open, replace them in here. Okay, so on our animator controller, replace the originals with the overrides. Uh, so let's see, rooftop close goes there. Rooftop open goes here and rooftop idle goes here. Now, if we click on the door, go to animation, we're now editing the override animations. So go to the artwork in Apollo supermarket here, and I'm going to drag in the frames, put them right there for the close, going to drag them in here, but need everything in red first. So just swapping them around like so. 
uh, we can always test it. So there's our close animation, looks correct. And we need idle, which is just going to be this frame right here. So that'll just loop with it being closed. We have open, we have close, and then we have idle. So now all we need is a trigger area 2D for this automated door. I'm going to add in that box collider. Let's edit its shape and size, pull it down here to, let's say right around there. Go to the top right, and then I'll click on the three dots to apply this to the prefab. Okay, everything looking good. And we can go ahead and hit play and kind of test it out. So if we go here, nothing's happening yet. And I believe that's because the box collider is not in trigger mode. Also why we're getting a collision there. So apply that to the prefab, hit play, and let's go here. We can see we got the open and close animations. So that door is pretty much working. Uh, the only thing we need now is a box collider for the frame so that we can't walk into it, at least not for now. So let's add in some kind of collider. We could just use a box collider, keep it super nice and easy. Okay. So if we hit play, we can walk up to the door. Can't walk through it, but the door can open. We just need to make sure that the player is actually going to show on top of the door. So we might need to go back to the rendering order over player and change that to default. Okay, and then let's take the rooftop exit door. Also make that default. And the supermarket, I will make that order in layer negative one. And that might work. It's uh, going to require some playing around with it. So yeah, now it's rendering the player in front of the door correctly. Let's move the player outside and see if that still works. So here we have the player going around all the edges. Let's just make sure this works all the way around. And yeah, that seems to be the right ordering that we need here. Okay, uh, one little issue here. This part of the door should actually not be blocking the player because uh, if you look at how it's showing, this would be the top and the player shouldn't be colliding with the top right there. So we can fix that really easy. Just uh, go back to scene view, edit the box collider uh, for the frame. And let's hit edit. Just pull this down here so that it's only blocking the player down here at the base of this little top structure. Now we can hit play and walk behind it just fine. If I click on the player, the order and layer here is one. I actually want it to be the same as this so that we can sort by the Y position. So let's hit play. And you can see the player is now walking behind the top here, which is what you would expect. You shouldn't be colliding here. You should only be colliding maybe with the wall of the building. You might even argue that uh, when the player is down here, that uh, he should be able to walk behind the building. So you'll need to play around with some of the settings and the colliders to make that happen. You could even make like a two layer game where if the player is on the ground, it has a different set of colliders than when it's up here, if you want. Uh, but this is working pretty well so far. We move the player back inside the top. Once again, being blocked by the correct colliders. Maybe we make the uh, wall edge colliders here a little bit bigger. That's just a matter of going back to the base supermarket, hitting edit collider and making these a little bit bigger if you need to be like that. Then you can hit play and see that the player is still gonna collide there. You can also customize the size of the player collider if you want. Uh, so these little bits here, the rooftop fans, those definitely need to show under the player. So I'm going to select those and put those as default, and then click here, and then I, I will apply that to the base prefab. So now if we hit play, the player is going to walk over them as we would expect. So now the player can walk on the first half, but as soon as you get here, it's going to kind of sort where the player is actually walking under it. That's not quite correct. So we can play around with that a little bit more. Uh, maybe if we go click on the rooftop fan and we go to the sprite editor, we can control the uh, sorting point for this and make it, let's say, the bottom center. And we can try selecting these and making this sorting point, let's say, top center for all of them. So if we apply that, um, let's save that, go into the prefab for the roof fan, and you can actually change the sprite sort point from center to the pivot point. So having it set to pivot, 
uh, I might allow us to fix the sorting a little bit here. So you can see now when the player's up here, it's not really putting the player under the object, which does look more correct. So it's like one pixel where that's a little off. So you can also change the pivot on uh, the player as well, which uh, might be a more universal way of fixing that for the game. Um, so like this, so you would do that in the same way, uh, going and finding your sprite sheet. And then if you go to sprite editor, you can change, you can re-slice everything and then change the pivot point to a specific position on uh, your game object, like down here. You can actually see I have that custom set for all of these sprites down here. Uh, but maybe that needs to be adjusted a little bit more. Okay, so either way, uh, now we have a playable space. We have walls that will prevent us from leaving the rooftop. We have a door that can open for us just by walking up there, and it will close automatically as well. Collisions are set correctly for each object. And uh, likewise, we can use the outside of the building in the same way. You can walk up to the door, have it open, go around the entire building, collisions all the way around, as you can see here. Maybe it needs a few more minor adjustments, but it's pretty much there. So uh, now what you could do is with those trigger zones, you could also have them teleport to a new map, a new scene inside of the building. So that would be one way you can take a multiple tier building like this and have separate game areas for it. So you can have a rooftop area, you can have an inside of the Mart area, and you can have the outside of the Mart area and transition with these animated doors. So that's pretty much the basics of how you can take your artwork that has no game mechanics set up and import everything into Unity, create game objects from them, create your animations, your animated controllers, and actually make it a usable, complete game object for your game. So I've been Chris. I hope that this tutorial has been helpful for all of you. Thank you for watching to the end. I'll have the scripts and a Patreon link in the description. Thanks for watching, and I will see all of you in my future video content.